The rule of thirds is the most common composition guideline in the world. If you've ever taken a photography class, or if you've read a book about photography, or if you've studied painting, I'm sure you've heard of the rule of thirds. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the rule of thirds to greatly improve your compositions when you're taking photos with the iPhone. But before we even begin talking about the rule of thirds, or any composition guideline for that matter, it's really important that you understand that these aren't really rules. It's called a rule of thirds, but it shouldn't be called that way. The way I like to think about these composition guidelines is as tools. So it's a tool that you can choose to use if it suits the particular photo, and if you like the kind of result you're getting using that composition guideline. I recommend that you learn all these composition guidelines so that you have a lot of tools at your disposal, but at the end of the day, when you're out there taking photos, it's up to you whether you choose to use these tools or not. But with that said, let me open up the camera app and let me show you how to use the rule of thirds. Okay, so you can see that I'm in my default 1X view and the subject I'll be working with is this boat. And it's not an accident that I picked a scene like this. When you're starting to learn composition, I recommend that you practice using these composition guidelines with simple, uncluttered photos. For example, here, all I really have is this boat, the sea, and sky. So it's a very simple, very clean composition. And when you're learning composition guidelines, simple framings like this tend to work better. So how do I frame up this boat? Well, perhaps the most natural, the most instinctive thing to do would be to simply place the boat in the center of the frame. After all, I'm taking a photo of the boat, why not put it right in the middle, right? Well, that's not what the rule of thirds would suggest. Now, if you look at the screen more carefully, you'll see these two horizontal and two vertical lines, which are the grid lines. And these lines divide the screen in nine identical squares. So the idea behind the rule of thirds is that you want to place important subjects or important lines in your image along these grid lines, or ideally at the point where these lines intersect. So if I'm thinking about where to position the boat in this picture, I would need to position the boat at one of the intersections of the grid lines. Now I have four points I could choose from. So I have two intersection points at the top and then two intersection points at the bottom. Now I know the points at the top aren't gonna work so well because the foreground isn't so interesting, it's just water. The sky has those beautiful clouds and to me, those clouds are really important. So I'm gonna start by positioning the boat at the bottom right grid line intersection point. And you'll see that as I make this change, the photo actually does become more interesting. So you can already see how the rule of thirds is starting to work. So I'll go ahead and take a picture. And while I like this photo, I think I could improve it even more. If you look at it more carefully, you'll see that all the interest of the image is kind of on the right side. So I have the boat on the right side, and the clouds are also a lot more interesting on the right side, and everything on the left side is just a little bit empty. So what would happen if I reposition my frame a little bit to the right so that now the boat is at the bottom left-hand intersection point? Well, it turns out that actually looks a lot better because now I have interest in all sides of the image. So I have interesting clouds at the top, I have the boat at the bottom, and I have interesting clouds on the right and the boat on the left. So this is the intersection point I should go for. Now let's compare these images side by side. So on the left, I have the original or the first photo I took where the boat was in the center of the frame. And on the right, you can see the photo that was composed using the rule of thirds. And you can immediately see how the photo that I composed using the rule of thirds looks so much better. So when you're thinking about where to position your subjects, more often than not, Following the rule of thirds is a great guideline that will greatly improve your compositions. Now I just showed you how to apply the rule of thirds for a very basic composition situation where we had a simple subject with very plain surroundings. But how do you apply the rule of thirds in other circumstances? Well, let me show you some examples. 
Right now, I'm taking a portrait photo of my beautiful wife, Oksana. And the typical framing, if I don't think about the rule of thirds, would put her in the center of the frame, like this. And while that does look good, I think this shot could be further improved if I rearrange my framing just a little bit so that I put the eyes of my subject at the top intersection of the grid lines, like this. And in general, in portrait photography, the eyes of your subject are the most important part of the image. That's what the viewer is going to see first. So those eyes, they have to go at one of the intersections of the grid lines. But what happens if my subject isn't looking straight at me? What if they're looking sideways? Well, in that case, it's very important that I use the correct intersection point for my composition. To give you a bad example, if I frame the shot like this, you'll see that my subject is looking to the left and it doesn't feel right. You can feel like she's looking out of the frame and that just doesn't feel right to the human eye. So what if I instead simply reposition my framing like this and now we have more space in the direction where my subject is looking. So now you'll see that I am framing the shot so that her eyes are roughly at the top right intersection of the grid line. So if I now take a shot, that creates a much more pleasant framing where my subject is looking through the frame and I give her space to look through the frame, which creates a much, much better composition for portraits. So if your subject is looking sideways, make sure you leave enough space for that person to look at in the frame. Finally, the tip I just shared with you about leaving more space in the direction where your subject is looking also applies if there's some kind of movement that's implicit in your photography subject. For example, if I have a person walking through the frame from one side to the other, even though the photo is going to be stationary, it will be pretty clear which way that person is walking. And if I want to correctly apply the rule of thirds, I would be leaving more space in front of the person and less space behind the person. The same goes for any other moving subjects. If you have a bicycle, maybe a dog or a car or anything else, generally speaking, you want to leave more space in the direction where they are moving. You want to give the viewer a chance to imagine them going through the frame. And if you do that, you're going to get a more harmonious composition. Now, like all rules, this is also a rule you can break. So it is okay if you sometimes have less space in front of your subject than behind them. That's going to create tension in the frame. It's going to literally create a sense that the subject is about to step out of the frame. And that feels a little bit uncomfortable to the human eye. It's not a harmonious composition, but it can work very well for a creative purpose. So like all rules, this is also something you can play with. Okay, so now you know how to correctly apply the rule of thirds in your iPhone photos. But like I said before, it's not really a hard and fast rule that you have to follow. It's just a composition tool that you can choose to use, and in certain situations it's going to greatly improve your iPhone photos. But there are also times when it doesn't work, so at the end of the day, it's you, the photographer, who's in control and who's making the composition decisions. But now that you know the rule of thirds, it is another tool that you can use when the situation is right and in those cases, you'll be able to take better photos because you applied the rule of thirds. Mm -hmm.